Okay, so first things first, uh, I'm going to use a pure ref uh, to add these images there so that I can use them. It's only a couple of images, uh, but pure ref is, uh, I just wanted to make a reference to it because it's a really good program and it's free. So if you just go to pureref.com, you can press download and get pure ref. Once installed, you'll get a window, something like this. And now I can go into my uh, image here and I can just grab this image, add it to pure ref right there and grab my other image, add it there and we're off and ready to go. So if I just come here and just place them where I want and pure ref has a lot of cool options. One of them is if you press C and you click and drag, you can, well, first I gotta select this image you can crop really easily. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna leave this one as it is so I can get a reference of the distance of the size of the pole there. And I'm just gonna bring this one here. And once I need this reference, I can come here and have it right there. Okay, let's get on with it. So first let's do some planning and let's think about how we're gonna uh, do this stuff. And the first one that I'm thinking about is this shape right here. And I think I'm going to use Z spheres to create this. And it should be simple enough. Now, I should uh, um, let you know that I'm going to be using two of two plugins that I created. I'm going to be using uh, the Pi Menu plugin. And this is basically Pi Menus for ZBrush. But I, I'll let you know where you can find uh, the functionality that I'll be using. So it's basically I'm going to be using stuff like this so to turn polyframe on and uh, selecting uh, Z modeler brushes and things like that. And uh, I'm also going to be using uh, the Mad Pony tool bag, uh, which is another plugin. You can see some of my videos like talking about this plugin, and what it can do. Um, but I'll I'll give you a hint on how you can do this manually with ZBrush without these plugins. Okay, so let's start building this uh, and I'm going to go with Z sphere. So I'm just going to select here a Z sphere and I'm going to go to here to the Mad Pony uh, tool bag positioning tab, going to grid visibility and I'll just uh, grab my all, all my views here. Uh, okay. So I can see all the different planes X, Y, and Z. I'm going to go using millimeters because I'm using Z spheres and it works better here. And I'm going to start with, uh, let me see, uh, let's go to start with the front view, uh, increase this a little bit. And if you can't really see your grid, you can go to draw and in draw down here, you can change your modifier frame opacity, increase that a little bit so you can see your grid a bit better if you want to. And I'm, I have views here and for this, for views, I have, um, a pie menu where I can quickly go between views, so top, front, etc. So I'm going to be using those that uh, menu there for changing my views. Uh, of course, in ZBrush, you can just rotate around and press shift to go to a specific view if you need to do that. So I'm going to go into Z sphere mode here in my transformation type and position and scale, open that up, and I'm going to choose the millimeter uh, unit and I'm gonna make this sphere one millimeter in size okay and this, this sphere is gonna be this center point here so I'm gonna go down to create that bit so let's start by doing that I'm just gonna select the six here and go down okay probably lower than that I'm gonna leave that I'll just turn auto zoom so that this zooms in and then I'm gonna uh, press W to go into move select this Z sphere and I'll come here to X make sure that that's my geometry right there and I'll just make my um, draw size a bit smaller using a slider from my mad pony um, um, Pi menus as well. You can change, uh, you have sliders that you can control there. Anyway, let's get on with it and uh, let's try six here. And so I got those uh, sideways here. Uh, I'll keep this big because this is going to go inside that pole right there, uh, as you can see. So let's start doing these guys here. 
and I have X geometry turned on. This is the selected Z sphere. If I turn on arc mode and I go to the right, nope, uh, wrong Z sphere selected there. So I gotta click on this one, go to the right, and okay, uh, that's not really what I want. I want it to be a bit smaller, so I'll undo that. And maybe a uh, two, and obviously the direction is to the other way, so use that coverage, and we're getting there. And uh, maybe a four, okay, three, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so th that's not enough resolution, so I'm gonna just increase my resolution, maybe six for my resolution. Okay, now we got something going on there. And um, actually before we do that, I'm just gonna add another Z-sphere there because it kind of goes like that. And now I'll turn on arc mode and go back to three. And we shoot, of course I need to select this one because it's from here that I want to do it. Okay, and now, I'll go up to do that a bit right there. So I'll turn off arc mode and I'll go up. Nope, got to select the Z here. Okay, that's a bit too much. Go to one unit and just bring that down a little bit. That one. Okay, set, let's go. Okay. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's something like that that but mm, not really so I'll just select this guy here and um, I'm going to children and I'll just bring these guys down okay now that's a bit more similar to what we want and I'll click this one go back to selected and go up a bit of course you can do this manually just grabbing your z-spheres and place them in the right location uh, but of course with this plugin is a lot faster so let's just go into children again and just move all that away so we can kind of make it more similar to the reference and I'm just gonna um, look at this from far I'll turn off polyframe just for now okay is it more or less maybe a bit more Turn auto zoom so that I don't get that view going back in there. Okay, so pretty close to what we have in the reference. And I'll just select this guy here. I don't need symmetry anymore. And I'll bring this guy down a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, I had children select, that's why it wasn't moving. All right, so quite happy with that. That's fine. I mean, it's a bit thicker on the reference, but I won't uh, really, uh, I don't really care. Okay, let's go to grid visibility. I'll turn off those grids so I only have my grid, my floor grid, and that's fine. And we got it going now. Yeah, uh, talking about resolution, if I only used three um, Z spheres for resolution here, that's probably going to give me some um, sharp edges, even with smoothing groups on. And that's why I'm going to this many uh, Z spheres for resolution. Now we're going to make an adaptive skin now. So I'm just going to check out my preview, see how that is going, and bring my density down. Uh, I'll just turn off my polyframe uh, before I go into preview, actually. And now in preview, turn off Dynamesh, I don't need Dynamesh. And see what we have. So we have that, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to get rid of a lot of these edges by having clean turned on. And I'm just going to do a make adaptive skin, height, the Z spheres, and this is the resulting mesh, and it looks fine so far. 
So I'll just uh, rename this and come here to rename and call this the holder. That should be a good name for it. And now I need some UVs in order to have this open up in um, Substance Painter. So I'm going to come here and you can uh, use work on clone or you can simply duplicate this. So you have a save copy there and I'm going to press unwrap. And when I press unwrap, it will create my UVs and I can see my UVs by pressing flatten and look, there's no UVs in there. Uh, what's happening there? Uh, Red goes Z foil, it's still doing it, is it? So flatten, no UVs, unwrap, creating sub to unwrapped one polygroups, blah, 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 flatten, we have no UVs, unflatten. Are we sure we have no UVs? You can come down here and there's another way to see the UVs by pressing Morph UV. And we do have UVs and this is... I'm surprised it didn't crash ZBrush. And let me just do a quick save because before we lose this. And... Okay, let's see if we can fix this uh, by using Work on Clone and do an unwrap now. And now flatten. Still got nothing, which is very strange why I don't have anything right just because I'm recording a video things go wrong <laughs> okay let's just delete that and I'll, what I'll do here is I'll grab hang on a second this is my copy isn't it I just hide that and try to do um, work on clone on this guy and work on clone Unwrap, flatten, still nothing. Okay, I'm gonna take this into uh, Maya. So I'm gonna use Gozi for Maya. And for some reason, Gozi doesn't work uh, for me if I go straight from uh, ZBrush into Maya. So I'm gonna create a cube here. And what, what usually works for me, if I create something in Maya, I press Gozi and I come back to to ZBrush and now that's the cube that I created in Maya. Now I'm gonna grab this holder. Now I'm just gonna rename this again because it's got a bunch of numbers in there and I don't want that. And I'll select my holder and I'll do a Gozi and now it should be in Maya. I just delete that cube here and press F to focus on it. Okay and now in Maya you can use um, Go to your UV here and select automatic uh, somewhere in there. There it is, automatic. Or you go into your UV toolkit and press automatic. And you get automatic um, UV unwrapping. Now the problem with this automatic, first of all, it's, it's it does a good job in the sense that if you press this button here, you'll see the distortion and red bits will be distortion, white bits will be no distortion. As you can see, there's no distortion anywhere. It's perfectly uh, undistorted. And if I uh, turn that off and I turn on my map, and if I click this button here, uh, I'll only see my map on my mesh. You can see that there is no distortion on the um, on the UVs, it's uh, perfectly uh, unwrapped. Now the problem with this is, especially for a game, is because the more cuts you have, the more vertices you'll have when you open it up in in your game engine. So this is really not an ideal UV unwrap. Now, for some reason, that ZBrush didn't do a, a, a... Usually, ZBrush UV Unwrap does a really good job. And it doesn't fail like it failed for me. Now, uh, you and I'm going to go back into ZBrush and try to do a polygroup UV Unwrap. But before I do that, uh, instead of using automatic, you can do a planar uh, unwrap. And you, you do need to be in object mode to do this. So if I click on this guy, press planar, I have a planar UV unwrap. And I can see now that is a bunch of distortion right there. But you can use the, if you go to UV, you can use the um, 3D cut and shoe tool, uh, which I have a shortcut for it right here. 
and you can use that and uh, probably going to end up using that uh, for this example. But first, I want to go back into ZBrush and see if I can use polygroups to my advantage uh, in order to unwrap this a little bit. Uh, actually, unwrap it because it's not unwrapped in ZBrush. So if I just press X to go into symmetry mode and I select these guys, press Control W to give it a polygroup. And now I'm going to try to unwrap my polygroups. Let's see if that works. So I'll press polygroups and I'll do an unwrap here. And let's see if we have an unwrap here. Okay, so with polygroups, it actually did a better unwrap. So you can see that there's less cuts on these UVs that we have on the automatic system in Maya, which means that there's going to be less vertex in um, in your game engine, which is what we want. The less vertex, the less less heavy uh, it's going to be. I'm glad that this worked because I would not know what to do if it didn't. <laughs> so, okay, so we're gonna go with that and I'm, and I'm gonna keep that one. Uh, and I'm gonna say no to Maya. Even though uh, in Maya, you can come here and use the cut UV tool to start doing some cuts and do your own UVs in, in your own manner. Anyway, let's go back into ZBrush and keep doing it. Now, before we, we move any further, I'm going to bring these into Substance Paint and we're going to look at how it's, it is right now. Now, there's several ways you can bring a model out of ZBrush into another application. One of them is by using OBJ and by using OBJ, you can use this export button. Now, the thing about this using this export button, you have these export options down here uh, that you can use, and you can use smooth normals. Um, I've actually, I'm, I don't really use this. What I use is FBX Exporter, and I'll come here, I'll just press Selected, which is a selected subtool. Uh, I'll leave S normals. Uh, there and I bring my smoothed normals amount to maximum. What do I mean by smooth normals? If I go into Maya, for example, and let me just go into object mode here, press the select tool, go into object mode, and if I just turn off my turn that off, okay, object mode, please, not vertex mode. Okay, what do I mean by smooth normals? If this object is selected and I have have it like that, which is what you can see in ZBrush. You can see the faceted faces, right? What you really want to do is uh, come here and um, use Soften Edge. And I, I believe this is somewhere in the Mesh uh, Tools, I think, or Edit Mesh. Well, it's somewhere in... Oh, yeah, it's in Mesh Display. Okay, so you got Arden Edge, Soften Edge, and you, you really want to come in and do a soften edge so you get rid of the faceted faces uh, well coming out of Maya uh, coming out of ZBrush you use this smooth normals amount now I'm using that tool that I showed you in the previous video so I'm just gonna press this button here copy to external uh, from that plugin and I'm gonna go into substance painter and here in substance painter let me just make this window a bit smaller so you can see all of it I have three screens, so... Okay, so I'll just uh, paste normal, because I'm not using UDIMS, so I'll just paste normal, and we can see what what is the result that we have here inside a Substance Painter. And you can see there's some pointy bits right there, and here is when we can actually talk about what's enough geometry and what's not. Let's see if we have any uh, baking errors. Uh, we don't have any baking errors at the the ends there not that I can see if we move the light okay so we can actually see these edges here but the thing is how close in the game are we gonna be looking at this thing this is the important bit because let's say if, if this was a really big structure a building structure and you in the game you're gonna see this up close like that this would not work at all. You need a lot more geometry, probably two or four times as much as much geometry as you got in here. But in the game, we're not going to see this any closer than that. 
So if we're not going to see this any closer than that, and if I just, I can add a, a um, let's just put an aluminium thing here, and we're going to see this like that. Okay, I'm not going to see it any closer than that. So there's no point in coming up in, in here and adding more geometry. This is more than enough geometry if we're just going to look at it from this distance. Okay, so that, that's when you know that you need more or less geometry. If you're going to look at it really close, you need more. If you're going to look at it far away, you need less geometry. So that's pretty good. And I'm, I'm happy with that result. And we got this first bit done. Okay, so because this video is getting too long, in the next video we're gonna we're gonna go and do uh, probably the base of the model. If I open up PureRef here, uh, yeah, we're gonna do this bit. So we're gonna do these five uh, supporting edges here for our model. So let's get uh, to it on the next video.